Well, good morning and thank you for uh, coming along. Um, I want to begin by acknowledging uh, the hard work over the last uh, 11 months and two weeks of uh, David Ayres and his uh, council. Uh, all of the councillors very engaged in trying to get a good result for this part of the Greater Christchurch area. Uh, to the Kaipoi Community Board for their uh, forbearance uh, and having to carry much of the brunt of, of uh, community frustration over that long period of time. The history here is that after the September 4 earthquakes, uh, it was considered possible to remediate much of the land uh, by some of the underground piling work that was to go alongside waterways uh, in, in, in an effort to prevent lateral spreading. The February 22nd earthquake uh, caused a reconsideration, but it was still thought after that time that uh, that type of approach would, would, be, uh, would be workable. And in one area, uh, the, the Waimakariri District Council was just weeks away from making a start uh, to, their, um, to that program. I did ask them after June the 13th to hold up on that program because uh, it was evident that there had been more damage to other parts of the city uh, and the expectation was that there would be further damage uh, out here in Kaiapu as well. Tolkien and Taylor have done uh, a magnificent job really given the size and scale of what's required uh, to firstly come up with those remediation proposals but then to uh, do further assessment that's allowed the government to make the uh, decision about an offer on properties that we'll announce later in this briefing. Uh, the um, long period of time that people have had to put up with uh, disruption uh, has been, I know, difficult for people, but was somewhat unavoidable. When you're talking about such large areas, I think it was appropriate that we did look to try and remediate land in the first instance but that has clearly now become much more difficult. Uh, I have a number of slides that I'd like to take you through that I think will help indicate the level of work that Tolkien and Taylor have led over the last uh, short while. And I want to make it clear that their work has been in collaboration with uh, the Waimakariri District Council, uh, with a number of other agencies of government, plus various engineering consulting firms uh, as along the way. I need to say also that uh, it's fair to say that all land can be remediated, but there are huge costs involved in some of that remediation. When it comes to uh, the potential for people to reoccupy land for um, residential purposes, uh, there is a massive, uh, uh, you'd say, gap between the work that might have to be done to, stable, to, to put in those uh, reliable foundations, to put in uh, infrastructure that could be relied upon, uh, and uh, to create the sort of civic, civil amenity that people could live comfortably with. It's not to say it couldn't be done, but it would take a long period of time and it would be enormously expensive. Today's announcement is about giving people an opportunity uh, to move forward more quickly, but also recognising the difficulty of remediation in these areas. So if we look at the uh, um, uh, data that we've got here, firstly, the map land damage for Canterbury earthquakes since September 4, uh, indicates this. And I, I note, Kate, uh, do you want to chime in if I um, start to become technically incorrect at any point? Please give me a big white wave. I don't want to, to uh, get things wrong. But essentially, after September 4, these were the areas where uh, land damage, significant land damage, was observed. You go to the next slide. Uh, this slide is showing... Uh, the damage that was assessed after, um, or, or the property damage, I should say, that was looked at at that time. Um, I need to say, if you go back to that first slide, that this, this work was done in conjunction with GNS Science, uh, as I said before, the local councils, but also LINS, I've got that, uh, LINS and uh, New Zealand Aerial Mapping, and uh, then a number of consultancies for an international basis. The next map shows the land damage uh, and it indicates lateral spreading, that's land that moves uh, in a particular direction, generally towards uh, waterways where you get cracks opening up, uh, and it also indicates where there's been liquefaction. Liquefaction is a process that occurs under the crust, uh, and the sand ejection comes up through the cracks in that crust, uh, and that's what most of us refer to as liquefaction. 
It also shows the areas of that observed activity in both uh, Karaki and Pines Beach as well. The next slide uh, is going to show you the extent of the infra infrastructure damage that was reported by Waimakariri District. You can see there the various colourings. Yellow illustrates major ground cracks of more than uh, 50 millimetres wide. Um, it's, uh, sorry? That's the next one? Sorry, which one are we on? Well, we're on the infrastructure stuff. Oh, sorry, OK. That's right, my apologies. It shows um, the wastewater network damage. Uh, it shows uh, blue is where there is no observed damage to sewer pipe network, uh, but you'll see that orange is where there are occasional breaks <coughs> in sewer pipe. Uh, the red is where there is sewer pipe that needs to be completely rebuilt. And if you look at, in your head, put in uh, the pattern that you see there, it'd be helpful in understanding where this is all heading. Um, on the, uh, the next slide, we look at um, the damage that was uh, assessed by the insurance companies to properties post-September 4. And there is a range of colours in there from uh, the yellow, the red and the black. And I, I <coughs> have to concede that when we're trying to make things simple, you end up with colour codes that become enormously complex because they all mean different things. But in essence, uh, the black dots show... Uh, buildings that were beyond economic repair. The white and yellow dots indicate uh, buildings with significant uh, damage. Uh, the reds are sort of in between significant damage and total repair. What you can see there is a lot of damage to property. The next slide is based on the same analysis post uh, the uh, event on the February 22nd. And you'll note that the predominance there is black and red with uh, some yellow. And the insurers tell us that most of the red tracks to the uh, full economic loss. So if you overlay that with the um, information about the infrastructure, you can see the size of the problem involved in a rebuild if the land were remediated. Um, the, uh, the next slide um, starts to talk about the change in the levels to the ground. Uh, it talks about the... Um, uh, severity of the liquefaction damage and the lateral spreading and cracking around those waterways, much of which many in this room will already know about. This is an interesting uh, sort of uh, position. If you look at the colour coding up the side, and these maps are available to you, it shows the movement in the height of the land over a period of time. Um, and uh, it, is, it is quite significant. If you lay over the top of that one more time, so I think we go to the next slide, Nick. This is the uh, using uh, LIDAR information, which is uh, light direction and range, shot from the sky, uh, able to indicate the movement up and down of the land. And those two shots show you 2003 versus uh, where we are today. And you can see from that that there are some areas that have uh, dropped quite significantly. The next slide. Uh, well, just um, well, I think yeah, I think uh, just want to before we go on to that next slide, just indicate a couple of things. So one of the things that you have to have to support uh, residential occupation is uh, thick enough crust uh, between the liquefiable materials um, below the ground, uh, effectively the water table and the the surface. Is that a correct definition, Kate? I think rough enough. Thank you. Um, so the, the, the point is that in the, all of the areas that we're talking about today, uh, the crust is severely compromised. If you're looking at um, Karaki Beach, which we've already made a decision on, uh, the range and the depth of the crust there is from 300 millimetres uh, to around 900 millimetres as, as in the vast bulk of that area. When it comes to Pines Beach... Uh, you've got two parts there, so the, the part that you will be, some of you will be familiar with where you drive up into a higher plane, that's all fine, but on that lower level, uh, the crust is estimated there to be somewhere between uh, 200 millimetres uh, and 1.1 metre. Um, in Kaiapoi West, where uh, some work is going to continue, there are crust issues there, uh, but in Kaiapoi South... <coughs> Uh, the, um, uh, 
the, the problem there is that the, you've got not only the lateral spreading but also that thinning of the crust. Uh, so the, the average there comes just up to uh, 1.5 metres, which is the minimum that you would you would require uh, for the for the uh, the building of a property. But 1.5 metres is not very deep. It's about from here to the floor. It's quite quite uh, a small amount of of, uh, of crust to be carrying a uh, a property. Uh, the um, areas in Kaipoi North uh, are much more compromised. The crust there ranging from uh, about uh, 400 millimetres to 700 millimetres on average, with a maximum available there of about a metre. So part of the problem here is, and what that, doc, uh, what that diagram there is showing is that the, the overall drop for the area that we're talking about is round about the height of an A4, uh, an A4 paper, piece of paper, just completely dropped down, and that's much bigger in some parts. So what the government has decided to do is to let people move on. It would have been, um, it would have been necessary to remove everybody off for remediation uh, in the first place. So if we go to that next map, Nick. The area that's outlined in bold uh, orange, uh, sorry, old bl bold black there, uh, was uh, area, were areas that were orange. Uh, so if I can, the numbers specifically are in your packs, but if I can just generally refer to broader numbers, the area to the north of Christchurch, north of, uh, of Kaipo North of uh, Roger Poistook. <coughs> That area is some 300-odd uh, houses in there that ca are going green. They're fine. There is a, they are a, at, a, at a height and have a crust that is perfectly acceptable and, uh, and good for uh, their future. Below that line in the red areas in the Kaipoi North and Kaipoi South area along the quay and along Courtney Drive uh, are going red. Uh, there's a little bit of red up in the town district uh, and then two orange areas where further work will be carried out over the next few weeks. The essence of the offer that we're making to people is that they can accept one of the two offers that the government put on the table uh, back on in June the 13th, uh, June 23rd for uh, residents in Christchurch. The first offer is uh, a full purchase of your property by the Crown uh, at uh, latest rating valuation. Uh, which we believe is 2008 for Kaipoi, uh, or if people think that they would be in a better position if they were to sell their land uh, but do a rebuild uh, with their, through their insurer, uh, they can accept that offer as well. All of the information for people in this area will be, uh, as of now, up on the uh, www.landcheck.co.nz. .org.nz. Uh, and people will be able to find out individually where their property sits. Uh, there are about 920 odd properties, the full numbers in your packs I hope, uh, that are in the red zone as of today. Uh, and they'll be able to calculate what sort of offer they might receive by looking at the uh, rating valuation on the Waimakariri District Council website as well. It's our hope that uh, weather permitting, or everybody in these areas will get a uh, letter from the uh, Crown uh, tomorrow from Sarah. Uh, in that pack, there will be a consent document uh, that would require people to uh, give us some information to help form the offer that might that they might choose. Um, and uh, at a at a later date, within a relatively short time, we would hope the full offers are in front of people. Um, no one needs to rush on this. There is a nine-month period where you can decide what you want to accept or not, uh, and then uh, settlement can go out as far as the middle of, uh, of the early part of 2013. So people need to, uh, I think, you know, like like a lot of had to understand that there is going to be significant change in their life, uh, and then look at how they might move forward. I can report that. Uh, from Christchurch, uh, that where there were 5,100 people put in this uh, situation. So far, about 4,000 have returned their consent documents to the city. A number of those have uh, mistakes in them, 
Uh, I'd advise people to take time to put correct information in them, um, and uh, they'll have to go back. We'll have to go back and check those, but uh, offers will be available for people uh, very, very shortly. Um, the hope is that uh, the Waimakariri District Council um, will be able to make contact with uh, those residents uh, to see what needs they might have, and they'll work alongside the CERA operation uh, to ensure that people do understand what's in front of them and what they need. Uh, I would also like just to talk briefly about the availability of land here in, in the Waimakariri District. Um, We've had um, initial discussions with the Mayor uh, and the Chief Executive and then with the Council and Community Board this morning uh, and I think it's fair to say that they are well aware of the need to make land available quickly and the CERA organisation using the laws that we have available to us uh, will facilitate that and I think uh, it's uh, I guess a, a bit of a blessing that we've had enough time for everybody to uh, think carefully about where to from here and I think uh, the, uh, what I was hearing from the community board and from the council this morning uh, was a high degree of understanding of what this means for the Kaipoi community and uh, where the responsibilities to lead people through that lie and I'm, I'm deeply grateful that, uh, that uh, uh, people who have those responsibilities have picked them up so strongly. Uh, I do uh, just want to say that we have not come to this decision lightly, we do know that it is very significant for this part of New Zealand uh, and we do want to walk alongside the WDC as uh, we move forward. So with those uh, comments, I'm more than happy to take uh, questions. Yeah. yeah um, I noticed that the lines and the figures talked about um, here in this, um, this plan are pretty much exactly the same as what was reported about a month ago. Um, described as uh, pure speculation at the time. Can you explain why that is? I can, because uh, firstly, um, the, the lines that were published were the, the virtually the map that was produced on September 4. Uh, so there's been quite a bit of consideration of, the, of what's happening with the land post that time. Uh, it also included the entire area that was subsequently uh, marked as orange, and uh, uh, in that, in that uh, regard, there were 1,300 houses that were affected. Today, 920 odd have gone red. So uh, uh, that's about a 25% inaccuracy before we start. I believe but, the figure was 700 to 1,000, and it was uh, marked out. So well, look, if the press wants to have an argument about were they right and we were wrong, go for your life, put on the front page, do what you will, I don't care. What I had to do was make sure that when we actually told people what the truth was, that uh, it, we could stack it up with a degree of accuracy. I did not have a cabinet paper at the time that you said I did. Uh, I did not have the information that you claimed I had. You were wrong. Now, um, I don't think it was helpful that you did that. Um, I hope that we can get past these little sort of uh, disagreements because they're petty and unimportant squabbles when it comes to dealing with people's lives. And uh, I just want a degree of accuracy in reporting. That's all. And I think... Uh, to say that someone had leaked something to you and that it was perfectly, it was perfectly legitimate was wrong, and I'm not going to back off that point. But I think it's a waste of time spending any, any more time in this pre press conference working out whether you were right and I was wrong. It doesn't matter. OK. Um, just in terms of the, the plan for remediation, if, if there was an option for remediation taken, I mean, what were the costs and what were the timelines around that? I mean, I think you talked about seven years for... Red zone in Christchurch. Was there any sort of figures put together for, for what would have been involved in remedying them? Yes, yeah, so the Waimakariri District Council would likely have been a lead uh, person or lead group in uh, trying to uh, get that remediation done. And, uh, you know, they, they as, a, as a council, had done quite a lot of work in, in leading up to what might have happened. So they had a degree of experience that was useful. Uh, so they were suggesting they could, might be able to get it done in two to two and a half years, and Jim Palmer's here who'd be able to give an indication around that. I think our concern was that, um, firstly, the design work hadn't been done at this point, so we weren't too sure about how that might un uh, transpire. Uh, it would take a, a reasonable amount of time to get a program together that could go out to uh, contracting, 
and then you'd add that build time on top of it. Uh, there was also some suggestion that in some areas you might put the fill in and leave it to settle for a period of time to work out whether or not that was doing the job. Uh, all it meant was a lot of uncertainty for a long period of time for a lot of people, um, and uh, the value in property is also potentially uh, significantly stripped out. So we felt, uh, on balance, this was a better approach. Well, was, was there a specific costing done around how much it would cost for uh, There were some costings provided, uh, but those costings had large plus or minuses on them. Uh, and we've, we've got one uh, area that we've uh, uh, started some uh, perimeter treatment in uh, where the experience would be that it's more on the plus side than the minus side. Um, and so while, while that was uh, helpful in trying to work out what an eventual cost of the Crown might be, um, it wasn't the absolute decider. It's a range of things that have been uh, added into the mix for this decision. But what it does mean, uh, the, today's decision... Uh, on the figures that are provided means that the Crown contribution over and above insurance, et cetera, uh, on each, uh, well, not on each property, but across the, averaged across all the properties is somewhere between seventy and $100,000 per property. Can you give any indication of what the difference between the government valuation, which may be what people get for their property, is, and the likely price of a replacement house in one of these new subdivisions? No. No, well, I mean, it depends what you buy. Well, I, I can't. Any section in a new subdivision is going to be worth more than many of the total government valuations. I think I think you have to start from the point of view that um, uh, if you just think about what I've just said, so we can't turn the clock back. We can't undo what happened, what uh, uh, occurred as a result of the uh, uh, the earthquake event. New Zealand is unique in so much as we're the only country in the world where land is insured. But it's not, as, it's not insured beyond a, a formula for a, a particular payout. <clears throat> so in this case, uh, we would expect once that a formula is applied um, and uh, the, um, the, the, the payment is made if people accept uh, either of the offers, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the gap that will be picked up for the Crown will be in that range of seventy dollars to $100,000 per property. Well, that's, that's speculation on your part. I can't, be, I can't really get into that. What I can tell you is that um, those properties have virtually no value now and probably have a reducing value um, because no one was likely to go and buy them. It's an awful tragedy. There's no question about that. What we have to do now is make sure that there, are, uh, there is sufficient um, other residential land available. Uh, we do have to look at as much as possible how uh, costs that are put in there because of uh, uh, you know, various charges that come on to developers, etc., cetera, are worked through. Um, and, you know, I think also we need to be recognised that if we want to go into certain areas, because new land uh, may be made available for subdivision, we'll have to have uh, very high seismic loading attached to it. Uh, we probably need to go to land that has that seismic resistance in the first place. Uh, making it a, a cheaper exercise for subdivision. If you take, um, and I, I really shouldn't stray into this area, but if you take somewhere like Pegasus, they did significant ge geotechnical work to strengthen those sections, and they have performed very, very well. Um, in other parts, had there been a subdivision, other places been a subdivision, that work may not have been necessary, taking a, an awful lot of cost out. So those are the sort of things that are ahead of us, I think. <coughs> Well, look, I, I think um, I, I don't want to be in a position of uh, telling the Waimakariri District Council what they should be doing. That's not, not our role. However, I think we do have a map on there. Nick, do we? Is it on the screen? Um, I was told it was, but have a look for it if you can. There we go. OK. So, uh, magically, um, <coughs> of course, we've all thought about this. Um, and um, uh, there are areas there that, that you'll see a a map in your packs that will give you the, the um, what those colours mean. Is, is Rangura there? But I think it's Rangura there, Kaipoi. Rangura there, Kaipoi here. Yeah. 
And I think what, it, what it's indicating is potential as well as some existing. Um, and, you know, the Waimakari District Council is, along with all of the district councils and the uh, environment Canterbury, have operated, uh, have been working towards an urban development strategy for the Greater, Can Greater Canterbury area, uh, the, our part of Canterbury, I should say. And that's had basically planning in it for the next 25, 30 years. Now, this event has changed uh, a lot of the, the demand that's going to be out there. And so I think uh, the Waimakariri District Council will uh, be, be quite aware of the need to... In fact, I know they are. You'll talk to David later, I'm sure, um, of the need to, to make more land available. But that's... All this is indicating is there is significant potential there and the council itself makes those decisions. We can help, uh, perhaps, with some consenting and, and other regulatory issues, and that's our role, um, but it's this district that makes its, uh, determines its future. Will this be quite a windfall? <coughs> uh, look, um, you know, look I, I one of the, one of the uh, perverse things about a disaster is that there will be always some who do very well out of it. No question about that. Well, look, I think um, I'm sure that uh, uh, David Ayres or Jim Palmer might want to make a comment about that. Uh, but from our perspective, um, uh, we we have made a commitment to work with the Waimakariri District Council on uh, some management plans for what happens in those areas in the interim as we move towards a decision about uh, what it, what will be the remediated state of that land uh, going forward. But uh, there's, there's no desire to have people living in, in uh, you know, in the middle of a, a, some sort of a, a, a deserted ghetto or, or other such. The other side of them is uh, That's right. So they're, they're not going to be totally isolated. If you look at the... Uh, they're the if, yeah, they're, they are. They're on the back here. Yeah. But these are decisions, and as I've said, they're, they're, they're you know, challenging decisions that uh, the Waimakariri District Council and the Kaipoi Community Board will wrestle with, and we'll work with them uh, to ensure that they get the best result for their, their people. Well, what, what we are what we are confident about is the is where the line is drawn. Those lines are drawn uh, on some natural boundaries as well. And uh, in the end, uh, we had to be equally confident that where people were being told you can stay, uh, that that we were right about that. Now, I've maintained all the way through particularly when we made that big announcement in Christchurch, that there will be odd cases where that might be uh, necessary to be tested. But um, uh, the, the team who have done this have had a, uh, you know, a, probably a more time to have a, a look at the situation here than, than was the case in some parts of Christchurch. One of the more political Clayton Cosgrove is that No, no. I'm sorry. I mean, look. Um, my responsibilities are to the people here. Um, I'll tell you the timeline. The uh, decision was made by cabinet on Tuesday. Remember, we're not abandoning uh, areas. We are making an offer to people. Uh, and I would have liked to have been here on on. Tu oh, oh, sorry, the decision was made Monday. I'd have liked to have been here Tuesday, uh, doing an announcement. The weather got in the road of that. Uh, similarly, yesterday was knocked out by the weather. Today we wondered whether we should go ahead because there's a state funeral. Um, you, you know, in the end, you just have to make a call. And we made the call very late yesterday that we would move today. Um, and uh, you know, the, my obligation was to meet with the Mayor and the Chief Executive of Waimaka River District Council last night. I did that. Um, I, I want to make it clear that... Uh, they, they knew more about their district than, than I did, certainly, so there's been a discussion going on behind the scenes, obviously. And, um, uh, you know, we, we've just got to bear in mind that it's the, the individual householders who are most affected here. And even this is not the, the, most, not the, the most choice way to tell people 
what's happening, but you, you sort of try and do your best. Um, Mr Cosgrove has all of the information that's relevant to this that was provided to him uh, some time ago. Um, uh, so red zone's already announced uh, as people are I think one of the things we, we hit the ground running here so um, as the uh, today in fact the offer documents are also publicly available um, New Zealand Law Society have them up on their website so that all the lawyers involved can have a look at it um, doesn't have individual details of properties but the type of agreements are there um, we would uh, 